Hi, I'm Dave Edwards. When it was created, Evernote was simply designed to store notes. And, and it worked for so many other people. I mean, I've been using Evernote for over 10 years, and I'll be honest with you, it has become core to the way I manage projects and the way I conduct my business. I want to spend a few minutes telling you about how you can use Evernote, how you can set it up, and hopefully how it can become an important tool for you as well. Here's what happened to me. Uh, there was a period of time where I was spending a, a fair amount of time uh, commuting between offices uh, in Milwaukee and Washington, D.C. And inevitably, uh, I had a lot of paper files, but, you know, I was in Washington and I needed a file that was back in my Milwaukee office or vice versa. And it was really frustrating to me. So I decided that I, rather than carry all of these files in my briefcase, which would really weigh me down, I needed to find a cloud-based solution. And I tried a lot of them. I mean, I, I, I certainly tried OneNote, which has great benefits, but I stumbled upon Evernote. I like it because it's kind of an open canvas. You can design it in many different ways. And I'll show you one way that has worked for me. Now, I know that some of you may be saying, yeah, I'm, I'm not totally comfortable with storing all of my records in the cloud. Aren't there security issues? Well, first of all, I don't store social security numbers in, in Evernote, but there is a way of encrypting your notes. And if you're really concerned, Evernote is very open and honest about how it handles security. And I would say that it's pretty state of the art in the way that it approaches uh, its security functions. So having said all that, I have a, a demo account. I, of course, can't show you my real account because it has a lot of personal and professional information. But I want to take you to my demo account and let's start setting it up and let's start getting you set up with your first notebooks. Installing and using Evernote on uh, a mobile device or your desktop is really very simple. Uh, to install Evernote's desktop client, you first want to come here to the Evernote uh, website, evernote.com, and uh, you simply click on the, uh, on the download button. So once you uh, log in, set up your password and the like, one of the decisions you're going to have to make is whether you want the free version or the paid version. Now, I think it's okay to begin with the free version, but I'm willing to bet that uh, very soon you're going to want to upgrade as there are features of the paid plans that you will likely want. As you can see, the free version is uh, still very robust. It allows you to sync up to two devices. So, for example, it could work on your laptop and your iPhone. You still have all of the search functions. Uh, you can clip web pages, but note the maximum sizes of notes and your monthly upload limit. Now, when you're just getting started, that's gonna be sufficient. But once you really get moving, I have a feeling you're gonna to wanna to upgrade to the premium plan. You get everything that we saw in basic, uh, but you'll be able to sync unlimited devices. Now, this is really good because in addition to uh, having all of your notes on your laptop and your iPhone, you'll be able to access them on your computer at work, your computer at home, or um, you know any other device that you uh, inherit, like an iPad, for example. You're also going to be able to access your notes offline. Uh, this is a great feature if you travel a lot and you don't find uh, an internet connection. Uh, I like it because whenever I've traveled, I now have all of my files wherever I am as long as I designate them as for offline access. You could also annotate your PDFs. Uh, the system will also allow you to search all of your, uh, let's say, Microsoft Word docs, your PDFs, and the like. Uh, you can create custom templates. So, for example, you could have a meeting template. Uh, you could have a template set up for each one of your clients. Home is a relatively new feature that uh, uh, Evernote introduced in uh, late 2020, early 2021. And I'll uh, take you around there and show you some of that a little bit later on. But uh, also important, notice here that the maximum note size and your upload limits go up under the premium plan. Now, look, as I'm recording this, uh, it's eight bucks a month. Um, you know, when you start out, don't worry about it. But, you know, when I first signed up with Evernote a long time ago, uh, I took the basic plan. And within about a month, I said, no, I want some of these features. And you know, quite frankly, my position is I like to support companies that support me. And so I figure for eight bucks a month, that's a, a pretty good deal. 
Now, there is also a business plan, and I would say that, uh, you know, if you're planning on uh, eventually implementing uh, Evernote throughout your organization, you'll probably want to take a look at the business plan. But for most individuals, I don't think it's something you need. Now, when you're getting started, uh, I would also recommend you go to the Evernote website and take a look at all of the different features and uh, some of the suggestions they make. Uh, for how you can use uh, Evernote uh, more efficiently to increase your productivity. Uh, through the course of this series of videos, I'll be showing you many of these features. I guess, though, it's important to remember that uh, everything syncs to the cloud automatically, uh, which is great because you don't need to have to you know, keep hitting save as you're working on a document. And I got to tell you, the speed of the sync is really very impressive. So that means that the note you create on your laptop or your desktop will almost immediately be available on your phone or vice versa. And you don't uh, need internet access because as I said, with the premium plan, you get offline access as well. So let's uh, take a look here. This is, uh, this is my demo screen. And uh, I wanna show you how you can easily set this up. I actually set up a, a, a notebook before we, we began. But if you wanna set up a, another notebook, what you do is you very come to the very top where it says no notebook, you click on that, and you give your notebook a name. Now, one of the most important uh, notebooks that I think you wanna create is an inbox. It functions pretty much like you'd expect any inbox. It's kind of like the starting point for all of the material that you're going to want to put in uh, to your Evernote system. Uh, if you uh, email yourself a note, which I'll show you later, it would go into your inbox folder. You wanna make it your default notebook. And so you come over to Actions, and you click on these three dots, and it will say, set this as your default notebook. So that's how you designate it as the important notebook uh, in your Evernote system. So that's the, that's the basic. That's where you want to start, first folder. As you can see, though, Evernote is pretty much a blank slate. So you might want to spend just a couple of minutes thinking about how you want to organize your system. Here's what I suggest. Think about the major areas of your life. So for me, in addition to my inbox folder, I want a folder that relates to my business, Dave Edwards Media. So let's create a folder and let's just name it. You can name it anything you want. And I hit continue. Boom, I now have Dave Edwards Media. Uh, that's one important area of my business. By the way, we can get rid of this uh, we can get rid of this test folder uh, just uh, very quickly. Okay, so now we have an inbox and we have Dave Edwards Media. Now, I also teach. I teach some online classes and I teach for a couple of area universities. So I want a teaching folder. And we hit continue. And now you can see we have three notebooks. Uh, sometimes I call them folders, but really the, the term is notebooks. Uh, I want a, another notebook, uh, which I'll just call personal, but it's where I might want to keep, you know, maintenance schedules, uh, warranties, uh, you know, just any number of things that, uh, that I need to reference, uh, you know, regarding my, uh, my personal life. Now, my wife and I love to travel, and we're always dreaming about new places to go. So I want a, uh, I want a folder, which uh, I'll just call vacations. I mean, you can create any number of folders. You can create folders for special projects if you want. But my advice to you is that you keep it simple. And I'm going to show you reasons why the simplicity of the number of notebooks you set up will serve you well down the road. There are so many different ways you can set up notebooks. I mean, I've known people who have a full, a notebook rather, for every one of their clients. Um, I would prefer to keep it simple. So you could, have a, uh, you could have a client folder and then within that, you could stack other folders and I'm about to show you how to do that. Notebook stacks are also very helpful. Here's the way Evernote describes them. Stacks are an organizational structure used to group notebooks together that are typically used for notebooks that have a same topic or theme. So notebook stacks are only visible to you. In addition, the notebooks and the notes within them can make up a stack, can be shared, but the stack itself cannot be shared. So let's take a look here. Um, let's think about vacations. So 
uh, you know, one of the places that I'd love to go back to someday would be London. So we're going to create a new folder for London. But you see what's happened here? Um, London is another folder, and it probably should be part of vacations. Oh, we can do that. Let's go over to London, click these three dots, and say we want to create a new stack that could be travel. Now I have a travel stack. And, huh, it's got a folder in there. What could that possibly be? Oh, it includes my London file. Now, what do I want to do with this vacations folder that I already created? Well, you know, vacations can encompass a lot of things. So I might want to reserve this for, let's see, we'll rename it and we'll call it vacations miscellaneous. So we've changed that name, come over here to more actions, and we are going to add it to the stack that we've called travel. Now, as you can see, we still have the same original notebooks we set up, but if you click here, we have stacks of two folders. So let's see, I'd love to also think about going back to Disney World. Can you tell I have grandchildren? All right. We've created this here. I come over to the three dots. I say, add it to my stack of travel. And now it's there. I can collapse this to make this neater, or I can open up and see all of my travel folders. If you change your mind, nothing is permanent. I can come over and if I don't want my miscellaneous folder for some reason to be in there. I just come over, click on that, and I click on remove from stack, and now my miscellaneous folder has dropped down and it is a folder on uh, a notebook onto itself. Now in upcoming uh, videos, I will show you how to add notes to each one of these and how to make that effective. I'll also show you how to tag notes, another powerful way of managing your Evernote system. I'm very excited about uh, showing you the other features of Evernote. Next time, we will, as I said, set up notes and uh, look at Evernote's tagging system. If you've benefited from this video, I hope that you would hit the like button and consider subscribing. We'll be back with more on Evernote and more productivity tips very, very soon.